Dots Makes. My name is Stephanie, and this channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, things I'm cooking up, books I'm reading, funny things my kids may say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes, that you find some inspiration along the way. We are in the middle of April, year 2022, and this is episode 83. A big warm welcome to all of you joining me today. I have lots of finished projects to share with you, and I believe just a small handful of works in progress, maybe not even considered a handful. Um, since I finished up so many things, there are just less works in progress to share. Uh, our weather today is very gray, and I didn't think the sun was going to come out. It still hasn't really come out, but it is much lighter than it was even a couple hours ago. It is just so gray, and this morning it was misty, and just, it felt more like October than it does April, and we had a big storm last night. Not No snow, but I, I definitely heard some hail, and we must have been right in the middle of the storm because the lightning and thunder were happening nearly simultaneously. And usually you would see the lightning first and then hear the thunder a few seconds later maybe, but it was pretty much just like one after another, after another, after another. So, um, but yeah, thankfully the kids didn't wake up that time. They, for a couple of nights, they weren't sleeping great, which usually means the parents don't sleep great either because they keep coming in or they're crying and we have to go in and, you know, it can be challenging for everybody. And then when you wake up, it isn't like it's all over because now everyone is grumpy from not sleeping well. So it just kind of continues and, um, but yes. Anyway, <laughs> uh, some funny things, maybe not necessarily funny, but thought provoking or just questions my kids have asked me lately. The younger one, so I have a kindergartner and a third grader. And the kindergartner was asking, if the earth is round like a ball, how come we don't fall off of it? So then, you know, you're trying to explain gravity and um, how, you know, if you're really small and the ball is really, really big, you don't feel like you're on an edge. And uh, what was it she said? If, if it's all round, how come when we go outside, everything doesn't look like it's you know, round or a hill, um, which was kind of interesting because there we do have a lot of little hills around us, so we see hills, but, you know, in her mind she's thinking like a ball, right? Like, you should be kind of going over this big hill. So we were talking about a little bit about perception and just, yeah, it was, it was interesting. And then, of course, the third grader was asking questions about, you know, hours in a day and days in a year, and so then we were talking about the earth and seasons and the sun and all of the orbiting stuff and yeah it was it was a good conversation and I can't say I know everything so of course you know it's a good opportunity to let your children know that adults don't know everything but let's find out more together we can pull out books we can use the internet there's lots of different resources available but you know I feel like when you become a parent a lot of people don't talk about how you either need to be a walking encyclopedia or be carrying an encyclopedia with you at all times. But these days we have the internet and there's a lot of information at our fingertips very uh, quickly. Though, I do have to say, I find it sometimes more cumbersome because there's more information to sift through. Whereas when you go to a library, you know, you have like a finite number of books for better or worse, but things are categorized and have been peer-reviewed, have gone through like multiple processes before publication versus like online, anybody can hit publish. But anyway, that's another conversation for another day. And I am thankful that at least the third grader has classes at school that talk about how to um, decipher or go through or use technology um, in smart ways. 
This video, along with all of my videos, have closed captioning provided, so just click that CC button um, if you need it. And I do provide show notes in the description box below this video. You just need to click on read more. And there will usually be timestamps for each section of my um, episode. I usually like to have a vlog, which you will have already seen in the beginning, that kind of highlights things throughout the last couple of weeks. And then I do this intro welcome, kind of catch up in the beginning before we jump into finished projects. And then usually I go to work some progress from there. And then the final section is eats and reads where I might talk about recipes I've tried recently or um, books that I've been reading. And um, I do have some things to chat about in that section today. So today in my Totoro mug, oh, I love this so much. This is a movie that um, my siblings and I have grown up watching over and over again. Um, as children, I believe we watched it in Japanese because it was not dubbed over in English at the time. And we don't understand Japanese. My family is Taiwanese American. Yeah, so Totoro has a special, always a special spot in my heart. But in my mug today, um, do you call it a mug if there's no handle? Is it a tumbler? Is it just a cup? I don't know. Um, I have a decaf black tea called Vanilla Comoro. It smells so good and you know it may seem counterintuitive to have decaf if you're tired from you know not sleeping well but for me I mean I don't do well on caffeine in general. I get really jittery and I can't sleep but unless I have it really early in the morning. But I find that if I'm tired I want to be able to fall asleep at night right? So then it's better for me to just have decaf. Not to say I don't sometimes gravitate towards the caffeinated anyway, but oftentimes I pay for it later by not sleeping. So anyway, cheers and let's get to it. So the sun has decided to hide away after peeking out ever so briefly. So I've turned on lights and We'll see how this goes. I can't always wait for a sunny day because it feels like these days the sunny days are few and far between but I'm not saying that I am wishing for summer because well be careful what you wish for right? <laughs> so let's get on to finished projects. Maybe we'll start with what I am wearing huh? Well the the shawl that I have on is not the finished project I am sharing with you, but I will tell you what it is. It is the Half and Half Triangles Wrap by Pearl Soho. This is the first one I knit. It's the larger size. It is a free pattern by Pearl Soho. I knit it in Pearl Soho's Linen Quill Yarn, and this mauve color is Rosewood Pink, and then this kind of um, pinky gray color is Rose Granite. And I wear it all the time. I love it. But what I finished is the Wild Poppy Pullover. This pattern is by Tiff Nealon and I test this pattern first I believe last summer and I had been waiting to cast on another one. Timing just didn't work out or I just had other things on the needles or my yarn wasn't quite ready yet as far as like which combination I wanted for various reasons, but sometimes when the time is right, you just wait for it. And I I love it. I'm gonna stand up a little bit so you can see the length that I knit it at. I wasn't sure if I wanted to knit a cropped length or a standard length, and I ended up going for the standard length. And there's this beautiful detail along the hem, and there's a beautiful detail along the yoke. And the pattern actually is written for elbow length sleeve or a bracelet length sleeve. And I actually decided to go for um, a short sleeve. And only because my other one is elbow length sleeve and also standard length, so I thought I would knit it a little bit differently. It is a fingering weight sweater, which makes it so comfy for warmer weather, which is not today, but I wanted to share it with you. I knit the size two. I believe there are nine sizes. You'll have to check her website for it, which will be linked below. And the size two ends up giving me about four and a half inches of positive ease, which is within her recommended range of ease. And I always size down one needle size when I knit 
patterns by Tiff because our gauge is just different, but pretty consistently different. So she's a tighter knitter than I am, and so I just go down one needle size. And I think the main fabric here, did I knit them on, I think I knit the main fabric on US 7s, which is a 4.5 millimeter. I can't remember right now if it's a US 7 or a US 8. I had the needles written down here, but I have three different needle sizes written down for various different parts, and I don't think I have the pattern with me, or maybe I do. Ha ha. I do have the pattern with me. Let's see if I <laughs> included the part with the needle sizes, though. Nope, didn't print out that page. Okay, that's all right. You can find all the information you need on her website, or if Ravelry is an accessible site for you, you can find it on the pattern page there, even before you purchase it. You know, the kind of like the patterns specifications beforehand, what you need to know before you start. But um, yeah, it's a fingering weight pattern. I knit mine using the Yarn Collective Fleurville 4 ply 100% Superwash Merino. This color is Delphinium. It's a beautiful blue, which I'm not sure you can see very well since it seems to be getting darker and darker outside. Um, this is, I would consider it a little bit heavier of a fingering weight. It's very round, it's very soft. It comes at 382 yards for 100 grams. And then my contrast color is uh, dyed by Sarah of Less Traveled Yarn, and this color is Vice. It's a very hot pink, like neon hot pink, and it is in her 757 sock base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon, and that is a light fingering weight at 463 yards for 100 grams. And I ended up only using 10 grams of the contrast color total. Now it is a lighter fingering weight, yarn so you will end up using less um, than maybe a heavier fingering weight yarn. I don't remember what the estimations for the contrast color are in her pattern but um, and then for my main color I used uh, let's see 154 grams total I think yeah 154 grams. I did knit my neckline a little bit closer in I think I doubled the width of it uh, nothing that I didn't like necessarily about the other one. The other one just has a slightly wider neckline just with less ribbing and I just wanted to do this one a little differently, bring it in a little closer and yeah I'm super happy with it. I did alternate skeins. You can see there's a slight variation in the yarns which happens with hand dyed yarns or just with variegated yarns and I did the helical method where you join your second cake and then when you get back around to it, three stitches before you slip those over and then you continue knitting with your new yarn. So you're never like crossing your yarns behind, like on the wrong side of your fabric. Um, you're simply just slipping and by doing that you're just kind of going around and around in a spiral and that is called helical knitting. It works really well when they're isn't like patterning in the body. So because the body is just stockinette, I knit the top yoke part just with one cake. And once I split for sleeves and got to just knitting the body in stockinette, that's when I did the helical knitting. I, I'm not sure if you can do it if there's like ribbing or any sort of patterning involved. Um, I've only tried it with a plain stockinette because I figure, feel like if you have to slip stitches, if there's any sort of patterning, it's gonna get the patterning off, right? So, but I do recommend it for just straight stuck in it. I love this pattern. I th think it's well written. Like I've mentioned before, I really enjoy Tiff's patterns. I've knit a lot of them. A lot of them I've tested for her. And I just, I like her writing style. I feel like it's very clear for me. I feel like her pattern layout has everything kind of sectioned off. And the font and the negative space she uses, I feel like it's easy on my eyes. I always print out my patterns because it reduces eye strain from me looking at a screen. I don't have to rely on something that needs to be plugged in or battery operated or charged or whatever for me to be able to knit. And I feel like a lot of times I just want to unplug. I don't want notifications popping up. I don't want easy distractions. I don't, I just want to be able to unplug and knit. And that's an option for me when I have my pattern printed out. And a lot of patterns I do end up knitting more than once, so I hang on to the pattern and I use it again. So yeah, I recommend you giving this a try if it is something you're interested in. It's very lightweight and it is a 
it's a fun knit. I think we will go on to finished socks next. The first one I would like to share with you are a pair of socks I knit for our third grader. Dun 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 dun! Oh, I love these. They are so beautifully springy and cheerful and I just love them. I knit these using 10 different colors and I participated in Jen of Everything Shapes Us, her knit along, which I will put the hashtag up on the screen here and um, mention it in the description box below. But I believe that, let's see, did I write it down here? That, no, I didn't write it down. I don't remember when the knit along goes until, but maybe end of April. You'll have to check her Instagram um, on her grid. She has all the details listed there. But I just had a lot of fun knitting these. And I did a fold over peekaboo cuff here, which I will link to my tutorial for on how I like to do it. I do not use a provisional cast on. Um, I just don't find it necessary. And I think I used up all of the remaining yellow that I had for this. This is why this fold over section is slightly shorter than I usually knit it but I was just wanting to use up the rest of the yarn that I had and then I went ahead and striped so let's see for her feet I actually cast on 56 stitches and most of these are all light fingering weight yarns which means my gauge is more like eight and a half stitches per inch instead of um, eight stitches per inch so it's a little bit tighter I use US 1 or 2.25 millimeter needles and I don't like to necessarily go up in needle size if I'm using lighter weight yarns to get to the 8 stitches per inch because then my fabric isn't as dense. And for socks, I definitely want a denser fabric because they wear better over time. If it's too loose, then you're more likely to wear holes into it and it just doesn't, just doesn't keep as well. And my kids are very hard on their socks. And I mean that in a most loving way. They just wear them constantly, especially the third grader. She wears them to school every single day. I believe the entire winter, she wore only socks that I have knit her. And she'll rub them around on the floor and just like, <laughs> she really wears into them. And so, uh, yeah, I, I just try to make sure that I can provide her durable and warm socks. So I did, let's see, 10 rounds for each color. And she wears like a youth size one or two um, shoe. Her foot length is seven and three quarters of an inch and her foot circumference is seven inches. And then let's see, I ended up using 41 grams total of yarn for her socks. They are slightly shorter, I think, than how she usually likes them. I probably could have done one more stripe in there. And a lot of times she likes to fold down her socks. But yeah, she'll still wear them. She likes them. She tried them on already. They have a shadow wrap heel here. And I used the tutorial by Denise of Earth Tones Girl. And I like to do it sometimes in the middle of a stripe. You can see that. In the middle of a stripe there. It just kind of grows out of it, which is fun. But you can always do it like in between colors too. And I know uh, Denise has a video tutorial on her YouTube channel showing you how to join in a contrast color shadow wrap heel. Um, and that's whether you're knitting them in stripes or a solid color. So that is these pair of socks. The next pair of socks I would like to share with you are a pair I knit for my husband. And I also didn't use a specific pattern for these. I knit them out of the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Sock Squad Sock Set. That yarn um, is called Wolf Shirt Wednesday. Here is the label on the screen. And this is in the 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Sock Base. So it is a light fingering weight yarn. And I really enjoy holding this yarn double. I feel like it gives a very true DK weight. And this is the yarn that I have remaining. And I knit my socks two at a time on their own needles. So kind of in tandem. So I have my yarn divided in two and this is what I have remaining of the main color. It's like a light gray with black. Not sharp speckling, like I feel like 
There's some speckling that's like very much like a speckle, but these are more like washed speckles. I have no idea. I am not a yarn dyer. I'm just trying to describe what the yarn looks like to me. But I paired it with January's main color that I had remaining from a pair of DK weight socks. That one was Melodious Meadowlark and it's this yellow. I feel like it's a it's like a cool toned yellow and there's very faint kind of um, occasional speckling. <laughs> I don't know. It's a very cool toned yellow. So I used that plus the gray in the cuff and that gave me a beautiful Grello. I'll show you that. Actually, before I show you the socks, I'm going to show you the third color I joined in, which is, whoopsies, dropping yarn here, which is the contrast color from March of this year. Yeah. And that one came out looking um, a blue-black in my socks from um, last month, but here they definitely register more black, but I think it's also because it's pulling from the black speckling in the gray yarn. So I'm going to hold it up here. I don't know if it's going to be very visible since it's so dark today. In the sunlight, it definitely reads more blue-black, and when there's no not good lighting, it definitely reads more black. So, let me show you the socks. Ready? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, these are so fun. So, let's tell you what I did with these. Just hold up one at a time. I did an old Norwegian cast on of 48 stitches. Now my husband's feet, uh, let's see, can we have his measurements here? I write down the measurements for the people I knit a lot for at the front of my project notebook. That way I can always refer to it whenever I need to. And his foot length is 10 inches, foot, foot circumference is 9.5 inches, and he wears a US 10 men's shoe. I tell you that so that it can help you figure out maybe some of your own numbers. So. Old Norwegian cast on, which is also known as Twisted German cast on, but I learned it as Old Norwegian cast on, so that's what I call it. I did 48 stitches on 9 inch circulars, and I used US 4 3.5 millimeter needles. And then I did a 1x1, one one, which is knit one, purl one, cuff, and I did that for 15 rounds. And then I cut the yellow out, and then just held two of the main color and I knit one round without any purling at every color change. And I can link to that tutorial um, up here on the screen as a card and or in the description box below as well. So then I did the just main color, I think six rounds total, including that one round without the purling. And then I dropped one of the main colors, joined in my next contrast color, and then this patterning here for the stripes, I did four rounds, two rounds, four rounds. So the middle one's back to main color and then back to joining in the CC. So I did not cut my main color in between all those since it was so short, I just kind of carried it with. I knit 20 rounds of the main color before starting a shadow wrap heel. And then before starting the heel, I did move my beginning of round marker over one stitch so that both sides of my instep stitches wouldn't end on a purl, or like either one would end on a purl. So there'd be at least a knit stitch and then a purl, or two knit stitches and a purl. I can't remember how it fell, but that way the purl channel wasn't right on the edge. And then I finished off the toe, continuing in the main color. They fit him really well, and I am very much enjoying filling up his sock drawer with lots of hand knit socks. These might be pair number 10. I can't really remember, but he enjoys wearing them, so I will keep knitting them. All right, this finished project is the kids' vest, and it is a pattern by Joelle Hoverson, who I believe is the owner or founder of Pearl Soho. I have borrowed this one book from the library multiple times over the years. I believe it's called More Last Minute Gifts, or last minute gifts. There's two of them. 
and one of them's called last minute gifts and the other one's called more last minute, last minute knitted gifts. I will <laughs> note it in the description box below or put a picture of the cover here on the screen, but it is a pattern I have knit before and it is knit bottom up and it comes in, I think, five sizes and it's for kids and it is for worsted weight, worsted or Aran weight. And I believe that Original Needles uses US 9, but I decided to hold fingering weight double and knit it at a DK weight. So my ribbing is in a US 6 and my main fabric is in a US 8. And I marled together a lot of different pink, pink and pinky purple yarns. And I love how it turned out. I've only done a steam block so far, not a full wet block, but it smooths out the stitches very nicely. I've woven in I think most of the ends. There's still a few in there. As I am marling, I usually knit until that color runs out. So then I don't often um, weave in that remaining end because I'll just knit until it's pretty much gone. But um, some of the other ones, because there's a lot of stop and goes, or not stop and goes, cut and joins, <laughs> maybe is that what you would call it, because it is knit bottom up. You knit from the bottom up and then you split to knit the front versus the back and then your shoulder shaping involved and neck shaping involved so you end up cutting there and then rejoining somewhere else and the shoulders are kitchenered together and then you're going to be picking up to knit the armhole edging as well as the neckline so there's a lot of ends to weave in which isn't a huge deal I think I did one of my decreases incorrectly again and I believe I did this on the first time I knit this as well if you look at the neckline one side you've got these very neat decreases the V's from these stitches here and then the other side there's like a yarn that's in front of those decreases. So it, it's not symmetrical. I mean, it is symmetrical as far as the number of stitches, but the stitches themselves are not the same. So I'm pretty sure I'm doing that other side of decreases incorrectly because it should outline this neckline really nicely. And I think, I mean, it still does. It just looks different. Anyway, I'll have to figure out what I am not doing correctly there. Um, perhaps, perhaps I'm just doing some pass the wrong direction. So it's like going this, lean, like leaning to the right versus leaning to the left type of thing. Anyway, I, I will investigate that. But yeah, I highly recommend checking out this book. There's lots of different patterns in there. She actually has it divided up by how long it takes to knit each pattern. And of course, it'll vary depending on the size you knit, how much time you can dedicate to knitting it, how many interruptions you get, or just tons of different factors, but it is kind of nice to have a little bit of a ballpoint estimate for each of the different projects. I ended up using 132 grams total. I think I had weighed out like a little more than 200 grams of yarn just to have on hand, and then I used one solid or kind of a tonal color to hold throughout the whole thing, and that one started out at almost I think 80 grams and I ended up with a little more than 10 grams left so I love how it turned out and I cannot wait to have her try it on after school today she's gonna be so excited I think a vest is so versatile especially when you have you know this kind of transitional season weather where you feel like you want to wear short sleeves but it's really not quite warm enough to wear short sleeves a vest keeps that core warm which then keeps you in general more warm and sometimes at night after she showers and puts on her PJs she's like oh I'm so cold because you get out of a hot shower and then it's cold so I think a vest will do the trick because sometimes you know I tell her to go put on a bathrobe or put on a sweater and she's like but it's so bungee because she's still slightly damp and then her sleeves and you know what if you have young children you you might understand this ordeal or maybe you don't have young children and you still understand this ordeal for yourself anybody you might be able to relate let me know in the comments below but yeah um so she just yeah 
vest solves the problem. There are no sleeves and it keeps her core warm and if she wants to sleep in it, she can sleep in it. The last finished project I'd like to share with you is a sewing one. There was a little snippet of it in the um, vlog part, but I sewed a beautiful tote bag that I am so proud of. You ready? Dun da da dun! Here it is! Oh, I love it so much! It's a patchwork one, and I was just feeling these purple, coral, ochre, light pink, brown colors. I know this is not going to come off, is it? Okay, I'll have to cut that little stray, stray thread later. There's some linen in there, mostly cotton. And the bottom is a denim box bottom. And then on the back, I had just enough fabric to just use this solid pinky floral in the background not background, on the back part of the tote bag. And so I think I used up every inch that I had of this, which may have started only, I don't know how much I had. Was it a fat quarter? Well, I don't remember, but. And then the inside, it's just lined with, I think this is just like, just regular quilter's cotton or Kona cotton or broadcloth or something. It's white. Um, I like the remnant sections, um, the remnant bins of fabric stores because oftentimes I can find at a very discounted price these solid fabrics that I can use to line anything. And I put in a drawstring and then I also put in cotton webbing handles. And then if I didn't want to use the drawstring, I also put in cam snaps. So there are these snaps on top. Keep the bag closed. Easy close, easy open. And then on the inside, I did a canvas um, pockets. And for the dividers in the pockets, I used an embroidery design. So there's flowers. I think the other one, yeah, they're both flowers. The other one could look like butterflies, but. Isn't that so fun? And then I have a little ring that I like to put on um, to hold progress keepers and stitch markers and things like that. Um, as mentioned in previous episodes, but if you are new here, maybe you don't know, I do not sell my bags. I do not make tutorials for them. There are lots and lots of wonderful tutorials online and maybe you have a local sewing shop that has classes that you can sign up for. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy making these for personal use and I have been sewing since I was a little girl. I don't follow a particular pattern. I just kind of let the fabric take me where it goes and sometimes it's the limiting factor is how much fabric I have or um, sometimes it's just when I feel like it's done, it's done. So to be honest, this came out bigger than I was expecting, not as a bad thing. I absolutely love this size, but I think I had started out thinking that it was going to be maybe like like two-thirds of this size and then I thought oh well maybe I want to put in a few other squares a few other colors and because I want it wider than tall I just kept adding on and then it came out to be this big <laughs> so it's definitely a good sweater size project bag but even maybe the start of a blanket even though I don't knit blankets I was initially inspired by my next half and half triangles wrap cast on which i'm not going to talk about here yet because it probably won't be until june and yes i realize it's already mid-april so june's only like six weeks away but i do want to finish my current one before i start talking about my next one so stay tuned for when i talk about my next one but uh yeah that will be my fourth yeah, that will be my fourth half and half um, triangles wrap. But I don't want to get ahead of myself and talk about it too soon. But that is what inspired this project bag. I can't say for sure, but our light situation is getting darker by the minute. <laughs> and yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you one work in progress because my other work in progress is a test knit. It is the Color Story T by Tiff, and I have shared a sneak peek on my Instagram, but I don't think I want to share it here just yet. I might share it 
on the future, um, well, I will share it on a future episode, but maybe the next one in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so we'll see. And I've also finished my Go Gently cardigan, which is a test for Amy of Amy Sure Makes. And I don't want to share that one until it is released. So that one will be probably on the next episode, which I'm guessing will be in about two weeks. Um, Two-ish weeks seems to be a good time frame for me to hop back in, jump in when the timing is right. I can never force it because it just wouldn't be enjoyable for me and probably wouldn't be enjoyable for you to watch me not finding it enjoyable. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I try to jump in here about every other week. It seems to be kind of how it's going right now. I do not set specific um, goals or rules or things like that because what fun is that? <laughs> So let's get into one work in progress. It is one you have seen a lot of since I cast it on January 1st, 2022. And since we were just talking about a future half and half triangles wrap, I thought I would share with you the one that I'm currently on. And the idea is to have it done, um, it's probably not gonna be done end of April, but I, I would love for it to be done sometime in May since I would love to cast on my next one, June 1st. So let me put my tea down. This one I'm calling Golden Hour and I'm knitting it on the recommended needle size which is a US 3 or 3.25 millimeter. I believe that's what it is. I haven't really gone into as many details of it in the last several episodes because I really didn't want to bore everybody but maybe right now would be a good time to review some of that. Um, if you are like me, maybe it doesn't bore you to continue talking about this pattern. I just, I really enjoy it. So, Pearl Soho's Linen Quill, 50% fine Highland Wool, 35% alpaca, 15% linen. It's 439 yards for 100 grams. It is not a super wash yarn. Here's the tag on the screen. The colors I'm using are honey pink and turmeric yellow. I have finished my first color and this is what I have remaining and am saving for a future project. It is kind of a warm beigey yellow with a hint of pink. And I truly believe this color changes in the light because depending on how the sun hits it or if it's a cloudy day or if it's artificial lighting, I feel like the color changes and it's something that I love about it. It picks up the colors around it and, and changes. The second color is turmeric yellow, which is a beautiful golden yellow. So what I am doing is I'm casting on for medium size. So the small size casts on 190 stitches. The large size has you cast on 260 stitches. Now what I found out with my first one, the one that I'm wearing right now, is that the pattern says to purchase three skeins of each color for six skeins total, but I don't use up much of the third skein. I can't remember how much I used, but um, it wasn't even up to 50 grams, I don't think, of that third skein, or maybe it was close to 50 grams. And the size is wonderful. I love it. But even if it was slightly smaller, if I didn't have to purchase those two additional skeins, that would be great. So. I have cast on 230 stitches and it works out perfectly for me. I can still block it out to a pretty large size and it isn't, um, I mean it's noticeably smaller but it's not noticeably smaller or less functional if that um, makes sense. So like this one, this first one is huge and I love it. I can wrap it around my shoulders but I can also do that with the medium size one. and. So this is my third one. So my second one, I knit the medium size. That was kind of like my test run, if you will, of it. And then this third one, I'm continuing with the medium size because I think it works out really well. And I think I'm in the middle of a row. So maybe, oh, you know what? I won't finish that row because 
then it'll go all the way to the marker where I need to do my turn and then <laughs> it'll take longer to come all the way back so anyway let me hold up for you what I have here I feel like right now the honey pink is reading much more pink than maybe what it was just in that little cake that I was sharing with you but I'm not entirely sure how it's showing up on screen I think it reads warmer next to the turmeric yellow so I have maybe, oh, I don't know how many stitches left to turn. It always seems like not a lot, but those are the longest rows. <laughs> and you're working each row twice because there are short rows, right? The pattern has you do wrap and turn. I'm doing German short rows just by preference. It's up to you. You can change it however way you want. The pattern has the edging just garter, so you knit all the way to the end and turn around and do the same. I am slipping just that last stitch, so I'll bring my working yarn to the front and then slip that last stitch from left to right, needle, and then turn around and then continue knitting. And that's, again, just personal preference. I'll see if I can hold up the edging for you so you can see it. But of course I don't have a different one to have you compare it to, so I don't know if it'll focus, but there it is on the screen. And for me, this is just a comfort knit. I can pick it up and put it down wherever. I don't have to be referring to a pattern. And it's, it's easy for me. I know for some people, they would find it super boring. And if that's the case, don't make it. It's, it's basically the same thing all the way through. But if I just need something on my hands that I don't have to figure out fit, I don't have to figure out ease, I don't need to figure out where to, I don't know, where to do a yarn over or a increase or anything like that. I mean, this is it. This is what I like to just have in my hands when my kids are getting ready for bed and we're reading or really anything. So that is that project. In the vlog, I had shared some making of bread I have the Bread Toast Crumbs cookbook. I don't have it right here with me, so I'll insert a picture of the cover here on the screen. I had gotten it for Christmas, and we have made several things from it. I do not have the Pyrex bowls that it recommends baking in, and honestly, it makes me a little bit nervous to bake with glass bowls. I know if they are oven safe, then they should be fine, but mentally, I, I keep thinking that they're going to explode. And I also know my mom has had those like amber brown tinted glass casserole dishes in the past and she bakes with those and seems to be fine. I don't know why a glass bowl baking bread makes me a little nervous. But anyway, I don't have them anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so I, I bake them in a Dutch oven. And the ingredients, not ingredients, the instructions are just a little bit different for that. And it basically follows what I've done with other no-knead bread, baking in a Dutch oven. I've had great success with it, and I made the quinoa and flax seed bread a couple of times. I've done the honey, the honey oat or maple oat, something like that recipe a couple of times. I think there's one with honey and one with maple in the book, and I've done both. And I think I've swapped out honey or maple and either one, depending on what I have available. So I think that's why I'm mixing up the titles, but I've done that. And yeah, it's been really good and really delicious. A book that's related to food that I have been reading, it was recommended to me by a friend, and it is What We Hunger For. Uh, refugees and Refugee and Immigrant Stories About Food and Family. And it's edited by Sun Young Shin. And it is a new, um, you call it release? I guess release. I think I will read to you what it says on the back cover because it can say it better than I can even hope to summarize for you. Food can be a unifier and a healer, bringing people together across generations and cultures. Sharing a meal often leads to sharing stories and deepening our understanding of each other and our respective histories and practices, global and local. 
In this collection, 14 writers from refugee and immigrant families write about their complicated, poignant, funny, difficult, joyful, and ongoing relationships to food, cooking, and eating. They journey to Algeria, to Thailand, to Uganda, to soothe body and mind, connect with generations past and present through rituals and recipes handed down from parent to child, and savor the flavors of home, whether creating familiar dishes in less familiar places, or coming to appreciate ancestral wisdom translated into modern food ways. Travel far and near with these gifted writers as they share their flavorful, luminous stories. I highly recommend this read. I, I've learned some from it and I've connected for sure whether or not we are from the same cultural background and there are also recipes in here if that is something you are interested in giving a go. But yes, I highly recommend this book. Another book I would like to talk about is Visible Mending by Aruna and this is a book I had mentioned in a previous episode I think a few months ago except I couldn't think of the name at the time and I have not really broken into it yet. However, one of my kids, she, the kindergartner, she fell on the playground and like I don't think she completely tore a hole through her leggings but they're kind of scuffed up and she was asking about fixing them and so I think we will give it a go and they're excited, they, because the younger one wants the older one to help her pick out which fabric to use, they want to pick out something together to make a patch. And it is a stretchy knit fabric, so I'm gonna have to just kind of look through this book and see what the recommendations are for doing that. Um, growing up, my mom patched our clothes a lot and she made our clothes too. She didn't make all of our clothes, but she did make some of our clothes and she also mended our clothes. So it's always been something that's just part of our, our life and just part of our way of living is that you mend what you can and you keep using what you can because we are a resourceful people. I did pick up a couple other books from the library but I'm not ready to talk about them yet because I haven't started reading them yet. Let me just double check my notes here to see if there was anything else that I wanted to say. Oh, I also read The Little Prince and that is a book that I read, it's a little, little book. I read it when I was in high school and junior high because I took French for six years and we read it in French. And I think this was, this could be my first or second time now reading it in English. And I just, I really adore the simplicity of the story and yet how in many ways it can apply to many more complex things in life. Just the questions asked and the the way it can bring you into abstract thinking about things. Even, even the question that my kindergartner had about the world being round and how come you don't fall off and and talking about the relative size of things, right? So if you've read this book, um, there are some little planets in the story, but the people are much bigger than the planet. And, and I don't think I'm really giving anything away. It's a very short story. But anyway, if you read it or have read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And maybe I, I didn't think about it at the time, but maybe I need to bring that book out and show her Though, maybe it would just make it more confusing. I don't know. Anyway, something something to think about. I think that is everything that I wanted to cover today. I'm sure there are other things because, as always, once I finish and I'm editing, I'm thinking, oh, but there was something else I wanted to talk about. But maybe if I remember, I'll jot it down for next time. So, oh. I hope you are doing okay. The world can be such a scary place. And honestly, sometimes, sometimes I wonder if, if I've done a service or a disservice to my children by, I don't know, raising them in this world. I know that sounds super 
maybe morbid. I don't know if morbid is the right word, but all we can do is do our best based on whatever our circumstances are day to day, hour to hour, and hopefully provide better for future generations, right? And for current generations. And I think once we get down feeling that helpless rabbit hole, it's it can be so hard to pull back out and feel like you can make any sort of difference. And when I am reminded that little things can make a big difference for so many different people. And just like I was saying earlier about perspective and you know being a one person on a gigantic planet, but you still can make a difference. You still can do something and it can be a ripple effect. If you help out your neighbor, you know, they might feel better so that they can go help somebody else too, or they can just do something, you know? And some things that may seem so little or insignificant to you could mean something huge to somebody else. And I think just keeping that in mind and knowing that sometimes it's just planting a seed or sometimes it's just giving that hug or that smile or that high five or just something, you know? We all have something to give in such a positive way and it's not all about, you know, unicorns and rainbows. That's not, that's not where I'm going with this. I, I, oh, I get really, I don't know, worked up isn't even the right word, but I feel very strongly about this and I, I do think we can all make some sort of difference and if we don't believe that then then what then what have we got right like if you think nothing we do can make any sort of difference then what is the point so maybe on a more cheerful note <laughs> I encourage you to do something to to be a day maker or just like do something that makes you feel good or something that makes somebody else feel good, not based on what you want, but what they want, you know? Um, yeah, so cheers to being creative. I hope you are doing okay and taking care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I will talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.